Okay, let's open our project in Visual Studio Code, and then we need to run our simulator. And to do that, go to your menu in Visual Studio Code, go to Terminal, and then select New Terminal. Then in the terminal, we're going to type the command react-native space run-ios. Hit return, and that should bring up the app in iOS Simulator. First, we're going to open this file app.js. It's in the root directory of our project here. And we're basically going to delete the contents of this file. This is the default display that we're seeing here on the mobile app. And since we won't be using this, we're just going to go ahead and replace it and start fresh. So I did a command A and then I deleted. Now, the first thing I need to do in my React component, we need to import React from React. This is required in all React components. Next, I'm going to export default function, app, and then, of course, this function needs to return an element to be displayed. So we're going to return a component called view, and then another component called text, which will display some text on the screen. These are both React Native components that we're using from the React Native library. So to use those, we need to import text and view from React Native. And then the export default function is so that we can import this module in another file. It's basic JavaScript. So as you can see, the home text is displayed behind the time way in the top left corner. Let's fix that by adding some styles to this component. So we're going to use Style Sheet API from the React Native Library. This is just one way to do it. You could also do inline styles, but this is a little bit cleaner. So we'll be taking this approach throughout the development. So we're going to create a variable called styles equals the style sheet calling a create method within style sheet, which is going to return a CSS object. So we'll create one called container. That'll be for our view component styling. And let's go ahead and make this a flex box. So to do that, we'll say flex one. And then we're going to do a justify content to center. So it's centered on the screen and then align item center. So it's horizontally centered as well as vertically centered. All right. So we've got to apply this now. So to apply it, there's a prop in view component called style. So we're going to set that equal to the styles variable dot container. So that'll apply those styles right there to our view component and have the home displayed in the center of our screen looks much better. It's not hidden. All right. So now I want to go over these components. So let's bring up our browser and go to reactnative.dev. And then there's a link to docs and API. And of course, there's documentation you can go through. So let's go look at the core components and APIs. And then in here we have text, the text component, which is used to display text. And then the view component, which is kind of a very fundamental component. It's kind of like a div in HTML. So we're going to be using this a lot. Okay, this is going to be useful documentation. I highly recommend that you bookmark this reactnative.dev. Now we want to add authentication. We're going to use a couple of things. The first thing we're going to use is the Amplify class from the AWS Amplify library. And this is going to help us set up our configuration with the configuration we set up in the previous lesson when we set up Amplify config. What that process did, it generated a config file right here called AWS exports. And that has all the parameters we need to configure our app to connect to that API. So to use that configuration, we're going to use this class Amplify and we're going to call a method in that class called configure and pass this in. 
first we'll need to import that file. So we'll say import AWS config from And then we're going to specify a relative directory path to that file, which is current directory. So it would just be a dot slash. That means in the same directory and it's called AWS exports. And notice I don't have to put the extension of the file. And then I call amplify.configure and pass in the AWS config. So now this is going to configure our app to connect to our API. All right, so these warnings that we're getting here are basically from the Amplify library. We can pretty much ignore these, so I'm gonna click on the Dismiss All. I'm also gonna set a variable here called console.disable yellow box equal true, and that'll just suppress those warnings so I don't have to click that Dismiss All every time. Next, we need a component called Authenticator, and we need to import that from AWS Amplify React Native Library. This is a React component. All right, we're gonna put the Authenticator within this view, and I'm gonna move the text inside of my Authenticator. So now if you look at the simulator, we already have authentication components within our app, and that's all we need to do to use the built-in components provided by this library. We will be customizing these, but we're gonna use the built-in at least for now to test and make sure everything works and we verify that users are created in our backend. One more thing we need to set here in this authenticator is a prop called username attributes. That basically configures this component so that it matches how we set up our backend. In the setup lesson, we configured our authentication to use an email for the username attributes because we wanted our emails to be unique per username. So we need to specify here username attributes equal email. By default, this is set to username, but we didn't choose username. So if you did choose username, you don't need to set this because it's already set up for you. So now if I refresh, you'll notice on my sign up screen, I no longer have a username input field. It just has email, password, phone number. So now this is all set up. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and test and verify that everything is working properly. See you in the next lesson.